Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about the steps that we need to take to prove NP-completeness. Now, when we're talking about NP-completeness, what we're talking about is the hardness of problems. So we are trying to make a statement about how hard a problem actually is. So we are trying to prove that the problem is hard, which means that there are no efficient algorithms that can be designed to solve this problem. So that is the most important part about NP-completeness. So far in the algorithms course, we were talking about how to design efficient algorithms to solve a particular problem that we were interested in. Here, what we are going to talk about is how hard a problem is, and we are going to try to prove that there are no efficient algorithms that can be designed. So it's a completely different approach. We are now talking about how hard a problem is and the fact that we won't be able to design good algorithms to solve the problem. So how do we go about proving that a problem is NP-complete? So here are some of the key aspects about NP-completeness that we need to know. The first important thing is decision problems versus optimization problems. Now, when we try to prove NP-completeness, we'll be mainly focusing on decision problems and not optimization problems. So what is an optimization problem? For example, say you're trying to find the shortest path in a graph. So you are trying to, trying to find the shortest path between two pairs of nodes in a graph. That is an optimization problem. Now, what is the decision version of the same problem? The decision pro version is, can we find a path of length k? So it's a question. Is there a path of length k between these two nodes in this particular graph? The answer is yes or no. So it's a much simpler problem than the optimization problem because optimization problem is, can we find the shortest path? Here, is there a path that is equal to k or less than k in this particular graph? That's a question. So decision version problems are actually questions. So decision versions of a problem are easier than optimization problems. So instead of trying to find the shortest or the maximum, we're just trying to say, answer this question, if something is off, if something in this case, the path of length k actually exists in this graph. So that's what decision problems is. So we'll talk about why they are useful and how they help in solving NP-completeness in a mo moment. So decision versions have answers yes or no. And that's what we are trying to, um, to find here. Now, why are we focusing on decision versions of the problem and not the optimization problem itself while proving NP-completeness? Now, that's the thing that we need to understand about optimization and decision problems. Now, decision problems are easier than optimization problems. And why is this the case? If we prove that a decision version of a problem is NP-complete, that is, we cannot find or design an efficient algorithm, it just means that we won't be able to design an efficient algorithm for the optimization problem. Why is that? This is because optimization problems are harder because you have to find the minimum or shortest path instead of you just trying to answer a simple question if, it's, uh, if their path of length k exists or not. So if you just show that solving the decision version of the problem itself is very difficult, that if you cannot find it, an efficient algorithm, it just means that finding an efficient algorithm for an optimization version is just going to be harder, okay? So optimization problems, you can think of them as at least as hard as decision problems, okay? So that is why in NP-completeness, we always deal with the decision version of the problem. So if you want to prove that a particular problem is hard, what do you, the first step that you have to do is you have to find the decision version of that problem, okay? So if you have an optimization problem, you first find the decision version of the problem. That is the first step to proving NP-completeness, okay? The next and very most, most important step is reduction. Now let's try to understand reductions. Now, before we try to prove, use reductions to prove NP-completeness, 
Let us try to understand how reductions are actually done. And then we will see how we can use this concept of reduction to prove that a problem is actually hard to solve. Okay. Now, once again, as I said, we're just going to consider decision versions of a problem. So we, let's assume that we have a decision problem, A. And we want to solve this problem in polynomial time. So here I'm just going to talk about the concept of reduction. Okay. So there is a decision version for problem A and you want to solve that in polynomial time. So how do we go about solving this? So we call this an instance of the problem. We are looking for a particular instance and we want to see whether that instance can be solved in polynomial time. To do that, let's consider another problem B. Okay. That we have already solved and we know that the problem can be solved in polynomial time. Okay, so both A and B are decision problems and what we're trying to do is we want to find a polynomial time solution for A and we're going to take the help of B. And why are we going to take the help of B? Because we have already solved B and we know that there are algorithms to solve B in polynomial time. So how do we do this? So what we are going to do is we're going to transform an instance of A to an instance of B in polynomial time. That's the first step. So you have a particular problem. You don't know how to solve the problem. The most useful approach is to transform the problem into a problem that you know how to solve. So B is a problem that we know how to solve in polynomial time. So if we know how, to, if we want to solve A in polynomial time, what we have to do is we have to somehow transform A into B in polynomial time, okay? So that's what this figure here is showing. So this figure here shows that first you transform an instance alpha of A, this instance alpha of A, transform that instance alpha of A in polynomial time to an instance alpha of B. So that's a polynomial time reduction. Next, we know that there is a polynomial time algorithm to solve B. So two polynomial time additions is going to actually give you a polynomial time approach to solve A. So that is how we use reductions. Okay, And most importantly, the yes, if whenever you want the answer of A to be yes, it should be mapped to the yes of B and no should be mapped to no. Okay, because otherwise you won't be able to solve the problem. Okay, so if we have two such polynomial time boxes that we've shown here, we have a polynomial time algorithm to solve A. Okay, so what we have just studied so far is reduction, that we want to solve a problem in polynomial time. We take it and transform it to another problem that we know how to solve in polynomial time and use that to solve this problem A. Okay, so this is this concept of reduction. Now we are going to see how we can apply this concept of reduction to prove that a problem is hard to solve. Okay, that is how we are going to use it. So how can we use this to prove NP-completeness? Because NP-completeness, remember, is all about showing that a problem is hard. It is not about showing that a problem is easy. It's about pro showing that a problem is hard and that you cannot actually solve that problem. Okay, so now instead of A, the problem A, we are going to, to focus on B. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to try to use reductions to show that no polynomial time algorithm exists for B. Okay, so if we go back to this figure, we are now actually going to focus on B. That's what we are going to focus on. And what we're going to do is we're trying to show that no polynomial time solution exists for B. Okay, that is what we're going to do. So how do we go about doing that? Suppose you know that there is no polynomial time solution for A. Okay, that's our first thing. Suppose we know this, that no polynomial time solution exists for A. Now, suppose there is a polynomial time reduction that takes A to B. So you have A that you know cannot be solved in polynomial time. Now somehow you do a polynomial time reduction and you show that A reduces to B. Okay. 
So you can transform A in polynomial time to B. And you know, the other thing that you know is there is no polynomial time solution for A. That's the important thing. Now, we will use contradiction to prove that no polynomial time solution exists for B. We'll use contradiction. So we're trying to prove that no polynomial time solution exists for B. Okay, that is what we are trying to prove. And what we know is A is a problem for which no polynomial time solution exists. Okay, so how do we go about proving this? So because we're going to use contradiction, we're going to assume that a polynomial time solution exists for B. Okay, now we assume, let's assume that a polynomial time solution exists for B. Then let's look at this figure. If we assume that a polynomial time solution exists for B here, what will happen is because you can reduce A in polynomial time to B and if a polynomial time solution exists for B. So that is if poly time solution for B exists. If a polynomial time solution for B exists. Okay. Then what is going to happen? That means that A would get solved in polynomial time. Because you can solve B in polynomial time. There is a polytime reduction. Therefore, A would get solved in polynomial time. Which, but what did we just, um, or uh, what was our assumption here? That no polynomial time solution exists for A. Therefore, if we make the assumption that B can get solved in polynomial time, A would get solved in polynomial time, which is not going to be possible. Therefore, we cannot have a polytime solution for B. Okay, that is the proof. This just means that we cannot solve B in polynomial time. Okay, so what did we study so far? We studied decision problems and optimization problems. We understood that optimization problems have to be at least as hard as decision problems. And therefore, we are focusing on decision problems for proving NP-completeness. And then we took this approach of reductions and we assumed what we've showed that, that if A is a problem for which we know that no polynomial time solution exists, then we can show that B cannot be solved in polynomial time if there is a polynomial time reduction from A to B. Okay, so we're trying to show that B cannot be solved in polynomial time. Okay, now there's only one final thing that needs to be. We need to have this problem A that we know cannot be solved in polynomial time, right? So only if we have the problem A that cannot be solved in polynomial time, can we use it to prove that B cannot be solved in polynomial time. So we need A. So there has to be the first NP-complete problem, okay? If you want to apply this logic, there has to be at least one NP-complete problem to perform this reduction, okay? So that is that well-known NP-complete problem. We, we Thankfully, there was, there's Cook's theorem or Cook-Levin's uh, theorem and where they show from first principles, they don't rely on this approach. They show from first principles that Boolean satisfiability is NP-complete. So they took a first principles approach, showed that Boolean satisfiability is NP-complete. Okay, so that is what they did. They just added one problem into this NP-complete bucket. And then everybody else then used this concept of reduction to prove that the next problem is hard. Okay, therefore they added the next problem into the NP-complete bucket. Now you have two problems in this NP-complete bucket. You want to prove that a third problem is NP-complete, you can use the reduction from any one of these two problems. Okay, and you can add that problem. This is why if any one of the problems in this NP-complete bucket has a polynomial time solution, if you ever find one polynomial time solution for any of these problems in this NP-complete bucket, then what would happen is all these problems would get solved in polynomial time because we have proved that all these problems are hard to solve or that no efficient algorithm exists for these problems by using this reduction approach. So one is linked to the other. For so if, if you solve one, you will effectively end up solving all of them. Okay. So before we complete this video, 
Let's just recap how we have to prove NP completeness. So let L be the problem that you want to show is NP complete. So you want to show that this problem does not have an efficient solution. That's what you want to show. Now let's assume that you know are aware of L prime, which is a NP complete problem. So it's a well-known NP complete problem and you know about L prime. So if you want to show that L is NP complete, what you have to do is first, you have to show that L lies in NP. So note that L and L prime are both decision versions of the problem. Okay, They are not optimization versions of it, the decision versions of the problem. And first step is to show that L, the problem that you're interested to show is NP complete, lies in NP. Now, this second step is very important and lots of students make mistakes here. So the second step is you have to take the well-known NP complete problem and reduce it to L. Okay, You have to take L prime and reduce it to L. It is not the other way around. You're not trying to reduce L to L prime, okay? That, that does not make sense. A lot of students do this mistake. Why doesn't it make sense? Because if you take your problem and reduce it to a NP complete problem, it just means that if you want to solve the problem in that route, that's not possible. You took your problem and you mapped it to that hard problem. It just made that you just decided to make your path to solving the problem harder. Does not mean that there does not exist an easy solution, okay? But if you take L prime and reduce it to L, that means that there is a polynomial time reduction for this NP complete problem. Everybody knows that L prime is an NP complete problem. And that has been mapped to L. Therefore, if L gets solved, which is the problem that you're interested in, L prime, the well-known problem will get solved. So it is important to make sure that you are reducing L prime to L and not the other way around. So L prime is being reduced to L, okay? And finally, I just want to remind you that you have to remember that both L and N for L prime are decision problems and not optimization problems. With this, I'll complete this video. In the next video, we'll look at an example of how to prove NP completeness. So we'll look at a concrete example where we apply these rules. Thank you for watching.